On the 14th of May 1940, Secretary of State for War Anthony Eden made this statement to the country on a late evening BBC broadcast. I want to speak to you tonight about the form of warfare which the Germans have been employing so extensively against Holland and Belgium. Since the war began, the government have received countless inquiries from all over the kingdom, from men of all ages who are, for one reason or another, not at present engaged in military service, and who wish to do something for the defence of their country. Well, now is your opportunity. We want large numbers of such men in Great Britain who are British subjects between the ages, ages of 17 and 65, 17 and 65, to come forward now and offer their service in order to make assurance doubly sure. The name of the new force, which is now to be raised, will be the Local Defence Volunteer. In Kent, as Anthony Eden was speaking to the public, were listening on how this new volunteer force would work and what they would be expected to do in helping to protect the county. Some didn't wait until the end of the broadcast. They went straight to the local peace station to sign on. During the first 48 hours, 10,000 men in Kent alone had responded for the call to arms and at its height, over 100,000 thousand people in the county had signed up and were on active part-time duty with their local home guard units. One comedian at the time said that LDV stood for look, duck and vanish as that was all they were capable of doing. Winston Churchill took a very dim view of this and changed the name to the home guard as it sounded much more like a proper fighting force to be reckoned with. And in truth, as they received new uniforms and equipment, they certainly were. The first uniform was a green denim, two-part uniform used by the army for dirty work, like vehicle maintenance, but in plentiful supply and gave a more professional look to the men. Worn with a leather belt, bayonet and water bottle, they looked smart, uniformed group. A standard tin hat and rep respirator were part of their basic kit along with a haversack to keep a rain cape and other small pieces of equipment in. As new and better equipment became available, they did become very effective and could have taken easily taken on enemy soldiers and held their ground. There were some unfortunate early incidents which gave them a Dad's Army title, but some 1,500 men gave their lives during the war years and although they were asked to stand down in 44, they were not disbanded until late 1945.